the frequency response problem that affects all stereo recordings. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to start with a demonstration, for which you must listen on speakers, preferably your studio monitors or your hi-fi loudspeakers in your listening room, if you must. The demonstration is more convincing if you're in the direct field of the loudspeakers, so you're hearing more direct sound than reflected sound from the room. I'm going to play some pink noise that's the same in both channels, therefore it's mono, and it should form a solid centre image, as though the sound source is directly between your loudspeakers. This is what should happen. If you don't hear a solid central image, then your system needs attention badly, but that would be another story for another day. Here's the pink noise just to get you warmed up. Pretty much what you expected, I hope. Pink noise in a solid centre image coming straight at you as though it comes from directly between the speakers. If you don't hear that, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do about making a video on the issue. But I imagine since viewers of my channel are either pro audio or hi-fi enthusiasts, and quite a few professionals too, that you do hear a solid centre image. OK, what I'm going to ask you to do now, firstly, is to make sure you are exactly between the speakers. Then move your head from side to side, just a few centimetres. Here we go. I could ask at this point, what did you hear? But I'll tell you what you heard so you can really listen out for it. What you heard was that the noise got brighter when you moved your head, and it was more dull when you were in exact dead centre. Here we go again. It's as plain as day when I try this test, and it should be for you too. If you don't hear it, then it would be useful to take the test using pink noise in your own digital audio workstation, or on your own hi-fi. You can find test tone downloads on the Sound on Sound website. I'll put a link in the description. Just to be clear, the problem exists when your head is central, and applies to any sound source that's panned centre in any recording. That would be your favourite vocal performer of all time. What you hear isn't how their voice sounds. The problem is that there's a path difference from your left speaker to your left and right ears. Likewise for your right speaker, frequencies around 2 kHz partially cancel, causing a dip in the frequency response of about 6 dB. 6 dB is a lot. The more absorbent the acoustic treatment of your room, the greater the effect. The more reflective your room is, or the further away you sit from your speakers, the less. The placement of the speakers and the size of your head also makes a difference to the cancellation frequency. So who does this affect? Recording engineers and producers? Or hi-fi enthusiasts? Audiophiles? Well, anyone who uses near-field monitors, and they sit close to in the direct field, will suffer this 6 or so dB dip around 2 kHz or so. And remember, this is the centre of the stereo image, where the principal performer in the recording is normally panned. But what about those lucky hi-fi enthusiasts and audiophiles? who sit further away from their loudspeakers, and their listening room has a nice, even diffusion. They're not affected at all, surely. Oh yes, they are. They're affected by the decisions the recording engineer, producer and mix engineer made in the recording process. These people listen on near-field monitors and subconsciously correct the 2 kHz dip, which isn't actually in the recording. It's just what they hear. So, dear hi-fi enthusiast, what you're listening to is 6 dB louder than intended at around 2 kHz in the centre image. Audio files too, no matter how much you spent on your system. So what can be done about this? Well, for existing recordings, I don't really know. Perhaps some clever processing could fix the problem. Listeners could sit further from their speakers, but that doesn't change what's baked into the recording. For recording engineers, producers and mix engineers, then the answer is that near-field monitors are a useful tool, but they don't tell the whole story. That will only be heard sitting further back, where direct sound is blended with reflections from the room. OK, I've demonstrated the problem, but I haven't really come up with any good solutions. I'm sure you can do better. Did you hear the problem? Does it matter? What would you do to fix it? 
in the comments. See you soon.